In this lesson, we're going to learn about some different angle relationships. Um, these are complementary, supplementary, vertical, and adjacent. So complementary angles are two angles that, whose sum is 90 degrees. Okay, so that means that the two angles add up to 90 degrees. So if you look at a picture like this, if this is a 90 degree angle in here and there was a line coming here, angles 1 and angle 2 would be complementary because they would add up to 90 degrees. Supplementary angles are two angles whose sum is 180 degrees. So these are two angles that add up to 180 degrees. So a 180 degree angle is a straight line like this. So if we had a ray coming out of here, angle one and angle two would be supplementary because they would add up to 180 degrees. Vertical angles are angles formed by intersecting lines that are opposite of each other. So examples would be as if I drew a couple intersecting lines here. Vertical angles would be the angles opposite of each other. So this angle and this angle would be vertical. And to give another example, this, this angle and this angle would be vertical. And then adjacent angles are, I'm going to say angles that are next to each other. And they share a vertex. Okay, so a Adjacent angles would be like if you have this picture here. Um, angle 1 and angle 2 share this vertex and are right next to each other. So those are adjacent angles. So we're going to take a look and practice classifying angles. So if you take a look at number 1, this angle and this angle um, are formed by intersecting lines and they're opposite of each other. So these are vertical angles. And number two, this angle and this angle are right next to each other, so these would be adjacent angles. They do not form a 90 degree angle or a, right, or a, a 180 degree angle, so they're not supplementary or complementary. Number three, F and E are right next to each other, so those are adjacent. And if you notice from the picture, they have the right angle symbol in here, so they are also complementary because they form a right angle. In number four, angle B and angle T are formed by intersecting lines and they're opposite of each other, so those are vertical angles. Looking at a couple more examples, number five, angle C and angle G are opposite of each other, so these are vertical angles. All right, looking at number six, angle D and angle P are adjacent angles because they're next to each other. And since they make a straight line here, they are also supplementary, meaning they add up to 180 degrees. Number seven, angle Q and angle K are adjacent angles because they're right next to each other. And they don't make a straight line, and they don't make a 90-degree angle, so they're just adjacent. And number eight, angle J and angle R are also adjacent because they're right next to each other. But they don't make a straight line or a 90-degree angle, so they are not complementary or supplementary. Get some more examples. So if you take a look at this diagram here, they tell us over here that angle four is 117 degrees. Well, angle four and angle two are what we call vertical angles. 
and vertical angles are congruent or the same. So that means if angle 4 is 117, then angle 2 has to be 117. So we can fill that in here. So next, we have to figure out angle 3 and angle 1. Well, if you take a look at this straight line here, this whole angle makes 180 degrees. So if this portion is 117, then if we do 180 minus 117, that will tell us how big angle 3 must be. So I'm doing my subtraction, and I get 63 degrees for angle 3. Okay? Well, angle 3 and angle 1 are vertical angles because they're opposite of each other. So if angle 3, oops, I just wrote that backwards, I'm sorry. If angle 3 is 63 degrees, then angle 1 also must be 63 degrees. Or another one of those. So in this problem, they tell us that angle 2 is 66 degrees. This angle right here is 66 degrees. So angle 4 is opposite of it, so it's vertical to it, which means angle 4 must also be 66 degrees. Now, if you take a look at the straight line right here, that means that this angle and that angle together make 180 degrees. So if this is 66, then 180 minus 66 will tell us how big angle 3 is. So we get 114 degrees. And if angle 3 is 114 degrees, it is vertical to angle 1, so angle 1 is also 114 degrees. Okay, let's look at one more of these. So angle 4 is 95 degrees, so this is right here, 95. Now if you take a look at this picture, actually, this angle is bigger than 90, so um, oh, it is a little bit bigger than 90, so that makes sense that it's 95 degrees. Angle 4 is vertical to angle 2, so angle 2 is also 95 degrees because vertical angles are congruent. If you take a look at the straight line right here, angle 4 and angle 3 together make 180 degrees. So if we do 180 minus 95, that will tell us how many degrees are left over for angle 3. So if I do my subtraction, I get 85 degrees for angle 3. And then finally, angle 3 is vertical to angle 1, so angle 1 is also 85 degrees. So those are some examples of how to find some of the missing angles if you're given one of the angles in a diagram like this. Okay, so in this next section, they are asking us to find the missing angle um, and name the missing angle and find its measure. So if you take a look at number one, the missing angle is right here, which is angle, actually hold on one second, I'm gonna try to blow this up a little bit and make it a little bit easier. Okay, all right, let's try that again. So the missing angle is angle UST, because if you trace it, U to S to T. And we have to say how big it is. Well, the two angles together make a 90 degree angle. You can see that box in the corner. So if together this angle and this angle make 90, then we would do 90 minus 72, and that will tell us how many degrees are left over for that extra angle. So that means this must be 18 degrees. So UST is 18 degrees. Okay, looking at the next one, our missing angle is N. L M. And we can see that that makes a 90 degree angle right there. So if this is 68, then we have to do 90 minus 68 to see how many degrees are left over for the other angle. So that means NLM is 22 degrees. Okay, the next one, the missing angle is right here, PNO. And it makes a 90 degree angle here, so if we do 90 minus 33, that will tell us how many degrees are left over for this angle here, which is 57 degrees. 
And one final example, this missing angle is angle A, B, D, if we trace it, A to B to D. And together they make a 90 degree angle. So if we do 90 minus 61, you're left with 29 degrees. So this angle here must be 29 degrees. So those are some examples of how to find a missing angle when given complementary angles. And we're gonna take a look at one more situation. Again, it says name the missing angle and find its measure. Well, in this case, we're given supplementary angles, okay, because the two angles make a straight line. So um, the missing angle is angle B, C, E. And since together they make 180 degrees, if we do 180 minus this angle here, that will tell us how many degrees are left over for the other angle. So this side must be 105 degrees. Okay, over here the missing angle is TRS. And again, together they make a 90 degree angle excuse me, a 180 degree angle because they make a straight line. So if we do 180 minus 52, we get 128 degrees. So this extra angle over here must be 128 degrees. All right, angle J, G, H is right here. And um, together, these two angles make 180 degrees, so we're going to do 180 minus 99. So if we take off this angle here, it will tell us how much is left over for the other angle. So this is 81 degrees. In the final example, the missing angle is angle OMN. And together, these make a straight line, which is 180 degrees. So if we do 180 minus 46, that will tell us how much is left over for this angle here. So 134 degrees is what is left over. So that this angle here must be 134 degrees. So there are some examples of how to find a missing angle when given supplementary angles. And those are some basics on angles.